in a principle in the receiver system. And we have seen that uh, the first stage is going to be the RF section, wherein you may have the RF amplifier or may not have RF amplifier in the case of uh, AM receiver. So when you have the RF amplifier, then we said that pointers are going to be there by using are using an RF amplifier with the, the high sensitivity, selectivity and so on that we are going to have it by using an RF amplifier in the case of AM receiver. And as we said, the typical uh, hope receiver may not have this RF amplifier. A simple uh, tune circuit may be there to connect to the antenna or to the received signal that we are going to have it. The next stage that we said is the mixer wherein uh, and before that, we have seen the different parameters that we are going to have it. So our uh, sensitivity, selectivity, signal noise ratio, fidelity, and image frequency rejection that we are going to have it. So we have seen what are the requirements for the different uh, parameters that we are going to have it and how to measure these uh, parameters. Then the next stage that we are going to have it is the mixer or the frequency changer. So to this mixer, uh, we are going to give uh, two inputs the in received RF signal and local generated uh, oscillator signal which is again an RF signal. So these two signals have been given in the mixer and uh, we are going to get the different signal as the output of this. So therefore uh, we will be operating the device to have this conversion transconductance because the output is going to be the intermediate frequency whereas the input frequencies are the RF frequencies. Then we said that uh, we will be having a separately excited mixer or a self-excited mixer wherein uh, in the case of self-excited mixer the same uh, transistor is used to function as the oscillator and used as the mixer that we are going to have it. So that output of this circuit will be giving you the intermediate frequency when you are giving the RF signal as the input signal. The other one is your uh, self uh, separately excited mixer wherein uh, we are having a FET, FET as your mixer and uh, the transistor as your oscillator circuit that we are going to have. So different uh, circuits can be operated with uh, self-excited or separately excited uh, mixers that we are going to have. It. The other stage is for this mixer connected is your local oscillator. So as we are having your AM receiver, so for this uh, what should be the local frequency that we are going to have it, why it should be higher than the input uh, signal frequency we have seen and uh, because of the tuning capacitance variations and so on. We said that uh, because of tracking problem that may be coming, we should have the uh, local frequency to be higher than the input uh, signal frequency that we are going to have it. Then we have seen the next stage is the IF amplifier or the IF section that we are going to have it so that uh, what should be the considerations for the IF uh, frequencies that we are going to have it. So it should not be too low or it should not be too high the frequencies that we are going to have it because a too high frequency will be having uh, a sharp uh, cutoff and too low frequencies will be having other constraints that we are going to have it, the tune circuits and so on. Therefore, uh, we said that a compromise is going to be achieved between these uh, frequencies and we have seen for the different applications of uh, the radio transmission and reception we have seen for the AM what are the intermediate frequencies that we will use and for FM what are the intermediate frequencies that we will use and so on for the different uh, applications of your radio communication that we are going to have. The other stage is your detector so we know what is your uh, detector and then uh, we said that uh, as the input signal varies you should not get an uh, intermittent uh, signal increase or decrease in a sudden way. We said that we are going to provide an automatic gain control when the input signal suddenly raises, it should not give you a hindrance to the hearing. Therefore, uh, we have seen that uh, practical diode detector also, so that how exactly we will be getting the signal. And in this detector circuit, we said that there will be limitation on the transmission and modulation index also, because your detector will be having distortion by having your negative peak clipping that we are going to have. Therefore, the, your transmission, uh, the normal, theoretically we can say that uh, we can have 100 percent uh, modulation, but in a practical circuit, it will be limited around 70 percent of modulation that we are going to have it, so that 
They were there, the detector will not give you any distortion that we are going to have. So these are the different uh, aspects of uh, the radio receiver and the other circuits are our uh, audio and power amplifiers, which will be detailed discussion in our electronic circuits and electronic circuit analysis courses that we are going to have it. So this completes your uh, radio receiver or the AM receiver that we are going to have it. The other type of modulation that we are going to have is the frequency modulation. Therefore, how the FM receiver will be. So the black static has been uh, given here with the uh, RF uh, amplifier, the mixer, local oscillator, IF amplifier, and the limiter that we are going to have it, and the discriminator, uh, the emphasis and uh, audio and frequencies that we are going to This is the typical uh, FM uh, receiver that we are going to have it. So here also, as you see that we are going to use the a super and principle in the receiver that we are going to have it. In the mixer operation that we are going to have, the output of this mixer gives you the IF output that we are going to have it. Whereas uh, compared to the AM, there are some differences that we are going to have it, some extensions and some differences that we are going to have it, so that we can have uh, what are the variations that we are going to have it, so that uh, we can have the FM receiver design that we are going to have it. As you have seen that, uh, the AM receiver, a medium wave band, we said that it is 5352, 1640 kilohertz that we are going to have it, or the short wave frequencies may be going up to 36 megahertz. Whereas the FM uh, transmission, we said that it is in the range of 88 to 108 megahertz. So this is the high frequency that we are going to have it, compared to our uh, low frequency signals or medium frequency signals that we are going to have it, in the case of AM recession of 535 to 1640 kilohertz. Therefore, uh, the design of the circuits is going to be different because uh, we are having higher operating frequencies that we are going to have it in the case of FM receiver compared to our AM receiver that we are going to have it. And uh, we said that uh, the advantage of FM is all the modulation is going to be there in the only the frequency variation. So what are the noise that has been added during the channel or at the transmission end that can be eliminated by going for uh, the elimination of these amplitude fluctuations that we are going to have it. So what are the nice variations that we are going to have it? They have to be eliminated before demodulation process that has been taken place to find out the actual baseband signal that has been transmitted from the transmitting end. Therefore, we will be having what you call uh, a limiter that we are going to provide so that the amplitude variations increase or decrease will be nullified and then uh, you are going to get a constant magnitude frequency modulated signal that we are going to have. So only the frequency variations will be converted again into the amplitude variations that we are going to have it. <coughs> and all the discriminators that we are seeing, only the H2 detector has some ability to eliminate these magnitude variations. Whereas all other detectors, including your phase discriminator, will pass on what are the amplitude variations to the output variations that we are going to have, which are not correspond to our baseband signal. Therefore, we will be providing what you call a limiting process that we are going to have it. The other one is uh, what I call is the de-emphasis. And we talking about the transmitter, we have used the word pre-emphasis, the pre-processing circuit. I said that we will be having a pre-emphasis circuit that we are going to have it. So we will see that what is the pre-emphasis and de-emphasis when we are talking about the nice performance of your FM uh, signal that we are going to have it, because that is required to reduce your uh, nice signal nice ratio of your transmitter or the receiver that we are going to have it. Therefore, we will be transmitting at the transmitting end, we will be doing the pre-emphasis, and at the receiving end, we will be doing what you call the pre-emphasis -em pre that we are going to have. It. That is, high frequency components are going to be amplified at the transmitting end, and at the receiving end, you attenuate them so that we will be bringing back the relation between the high frequency and low frequency in the same way that is the actual signal that has been generated by the source. So we will be going for uh, what you call the de-emphasis circuit. So your limiting and de-emphasis circuits are not there in your AM receiver that we are going to have. So this is the additional circuit that we are going to provide in this FM receiver that we are going to have it. The other one is the different type of demodulation that we are going to have it. In the case of AM, we have a simple diode detector circuit, whereas that the circuit will not be of 
giving you required operation and therefore you going for what you call the voltage discriminator along with your limiting process that we are going to have. So different uh, demodulation techniques we are going to use in this uh, discriminator or your phase discriminator we are going to use to get back your baseband signal that we are going to have it. And then uh, as I said that we are going to use this de-emphasis network and this we are going to have your audio and uh, power amplifiers that we are going to have it to get your required power levels to be given to your loudspeaker that we are going to have. So these are the typical uh, blocks that we are going to have it and uh, again the AGC that we are going to have it in your case of uh, statical diode detector we said that a simple uh, your diode detector is going to give you the output variations with your low pass filter then we are going to get the DC signal that has been given whereas here we are going to have a different uh, AGC technique we are going to provide so that we will be getting the gain control automatically when the input signals are changing at a large variation that we are going to have because uh, basically we said that uh, FM signals not vary the amplitude and the frequency variations are correspond to your baseband signal. So we will be having a different types of uh, AGC achievement that we are going to have. So these are the different uh, variations that we are going to have. And out of this uh, we said that we are going to use an RF amplifier. We are not given as RF stage. So this naturally FM receiver always will have an RF amplifier. In the case of AM receiver we said that there may be an RF amplifier or there may not be an RF amplifier depending on what type of receiver you are going to use. If you are having a home receiver there may not be any RF amplifier. Whereas if you are having a sophisticated receiver then we said that an RF amplifier should be there. Whereas in the FM receiver always we require to provide a first stage as RF amplifier that we are going to have it. Because your operating frequencies are higher and bandwidth is higher. So if you don't have any RF amplifier here which reduces to the or uh, passes only required bandwidth, if you have only a tuning circuit and given to the mixer, mixer receives all the signals that we are going to have it with the noise signals that we are going to have it. Because the FM bandwidth is going to be of 200 kilohertz. So whatever the noise that has going to be there in this 200 kilohertz uh, bandwidth plus or minus of this 100 kilohertz of your central frequency, all the signals that has been generated in the channel, if you pass it on to your mixer stage, if you don't have an RF amplifier which limits only to this 200 kilohertz. Otherwise, all the frequency generated, noise signal generated, will be passed on to your mixer stage that we are going to have it. To eliminate that, we are going to have your RF amplifier always in the case of the FM receiver that we are going to have it. So, we have some uh, variations from your AM receiver and some additional circuits that we are going to have it in the case of your FM receiver that we are going to have. So one circuit that we will be having is always uh, a common uh, gate or common grounded uh, gate uh, that uh, amplifier that we are going to have it so that uh, we have to have this uh, bandwidth to be of only the 200 kilohertz so that if you don't have the RF amplifier, the entire signal, noise signal will be passed on to your mixer and once you don't convert that, your noise you cannot eliminate. Whereas by going for uh, the RF amplifier, have only this 200 kilohertz bandwidth, whatever the noise that is there, only in this 200 kilohertz will pass. Whereas other than this 200 kilohertz, no noise will be passed on from your receiving circuit or receiving stage or the functional stage. And in addition to that, the antenna has to be matched on to the next stage of the mixer that we are going to have it. Therefore, we should have a low impedance circuit that we are going to have it. Therefore, always we will be going for a common ground, ground gate, transistor, the PET device that we are going to have it, or a cascode circuit that we are going to have, cascode amplifier. What is the input impedance of your cascode amplifier? Compared to your CM amplifier, the cascode amplifier will be having a low input impedance that we are going to have so that you can match the input impedance of an amplifier to the antenna circuit that we are going to have it. So your RF amplifier typically may be of a grounded gate spectra amplifier or a cascode amplifier that we are going to have it. And invariably we are going to provide an amplifier in the case of FM receiver that we are going to have it. So we are going to provide uh, a grounded gate or cascode amplifier which gives you the low input impedance so that you can match that low input impedance to your 
and must assure that we are going to have it. Therefore, um, we'll be having uh, the required operation to be matching, and then band uh, limitation also will be done by your RF stage that we are going to have by providing an RF answer in your FM receiver that we are going to have it. Then the other stage that we are going to have it is your uh, oscillator stage that we are going to have it. Well, in, we'll be using the Calpits oscillator or the clap oscillator that we are going to have it for the work. Very high frequency operation of this 88 to 108 megahertz of uh, frequency that we are going to have it. And in the case of uh, the AM receiver, because we said that uh, we'll be having what you call a three-point tracking loss, if the capacitors are not properly tuned, then we'll be having what you call the tracking problems. Because the low end to the higher end, the ratio is very, very large. If you say that uh, 535 to 1640 kilohertz that we are going to have it, the ratio is 1 is to 3, minimum that we are going to have it. Whereas, in the case of uh, FM, we have 88 to 108 megahertz. The ratio between the higher and the lower end is 1 is to 1.24 approximately. Therefore, the capacitance variations can be obtained very easily for this 1 is to 1.25 frequency variation from 88 to 108 megahertz. As you said that the capacitance can be varied for the frequency of 1 is to 3.2. So in the AM we said that this variation, frequency variation should be limited to 1 is to 3.2 from the lower end to the higher end. Whereas from lower end to higher end, the entire frequency band of the FM is going to have only 1 is to 1.25 that we are going to have it. Therefore, there will not be any tracking problems that we are going to have with my doctor in your AM receiver that we are going to have it. And uh, we'll be always using a separately excited mixer in the case of uh, FM receiver that we are going to have it. As such, we said that we are going to have an RF amplifier also. And then we have all these uh, operations to be exactly obtained. We'll be going for a separately excited mixer with uh, petrazeal mixer and transistor as the oscillator that we have seen in the case of uh, a separately excited uh, mixer that we are going to have it. So, our days will be having a separate, uh, the separate like that mixer and there will not be any tagging problems in your mixer or the oscillator circuit that we are going to have it. So, whether it is uh, low frequency or high frequency compared to your receiver signal, there will not be any problem of your tagging problems. Whereas, in the case of AM, if you say that uh, the localized frequency less than the receiver signal frequency, the frequency has to range from 8, 85 to what is the frequency that we are going to have it? So 1000, uh, 1100 kilohertz that we are going to have it because 1640 minus 455, right? So the ratio is going to be much higher than the frequency variation that can be positive with the capacitor variation. So therefore, you'll be having the tracking problems. Whereas in the case of uh, FM, there will not be any variations that we are going to have it, right? So this is the limitation for the advantage that we are going to have it in the case of FM. No tracking problems that we are going to have it. And by having an RF amplifier and the mixer stays separately, separate like that mixer, the noise performance can be improved compared to our AM receiver that we are going to have. The next stage that we are going to have it is the IF stage or the IF amplifier that we are going to have it. So in this, uh, what should be the frequency that we are going to have it? So again, the same condition that we are going to have it and because we have this 88 to 108 megahertz, we said that 10.7 megahertz is the intermediate frequency that we are going to choose. And the IF amplifier should provide you this 200 kilohertz bandwidth that we are going to have it. Right? Because your signal is spread over this 200 kilohertz. With your delta IF of 150 kilohertz, the phase frequency deviation, and the guard band that we are going to have it. Total, each station will be having a 200 kilohertz bandwidth that we are going to have it. Therefore, your well, IF amplifier should provide this uh, 200 kilohertz bandwidth that we are going to have. Therefore, if you provide uh, a double tune circuit, then providing this uh, higher bandwidth is going to be a problem that we are going to have. So normally we'll be having in the IF amplifier of the FM receiver a single tuned uh, circuit that we are going to have it. So that uh, we'll be getting the required uh, bandwidth, higher bandwidth that we are going to have. And because uh, we are having the I have bandwidth that we are going to have it is larger, the Q value should be smaller. When the Q value is smaller, 
the gain will be small. Therefore, a single stage IF amplifier may not be sufficient to give you the required amplification and the IF you can see that we are going to have it. So at least it's two stage amplifier or more stages of amplification may be there in your FM receiver that we are going to have it. So what is the problem when you cascade the different uh, stages that we are going to have it? No doubt you are getting the higher gain, A1 into A2. But what is the bandwidth? What happens to the bandwidth? It will decays. The shrinkage will be there and because you are having the cascading of the system that we are going to have. Therefore, this shrinkage also have to take into consideration because uh, if you are not taken care, that means your actual signal you are going to reduce or attenuate that we are going to have, which you don't want. The anti 200 kilohertz bandwidth should be there even after the shrinkage that we are going to have. Therefore, when you use number of stages, this frequency bandwidth also has to be considered in your IF stage that we are going to have. That's what the shrinkage in the bandwidth we have to avoid in this cascade operation that we are going to have. So because we are having higher bandwidth, gain per stage is low. Therefore, you should have more number of amplifiers that we are going to have. At least a two-stage amplifier is required in the case of FM receiver we are going to have. Then what is the next stage? After the IF amplifier, what is the next stage that we have had? A limiter is going to be there. So as we said that, next, the limiter is going to provide the variations in the amplitude at the input stage that we are going to have it. Because in a normal transmission, if there is no noise, the amplitude of your signal should not vary. It's a constant amplitude. What are the variations that we are going to have it? It will be only by the frequency variations that we are going to have it. So if at all any signal is going to be there with a varying amplitude, that means that is only the noise that we are going to have it. So we want to reduce this noise by going for a limiter secure that we are going to have it. So here we are going to have, a, simply you can say that you have a clipper, but what will happen if you have only a clipper? If the input is increasing compared to a required level, the clipper will eliminate. But if the input decreases, what will happen? The clipper will not be giving the required operation that we are going to have it. But a basic operation that we say is by clipping, we are going to provide the required output variations that we are going to have it, so that we are going to get a constant output irrespective of the input variations that we are going to have, whether it increases or decreases. So that we are going to achieve by what you call a leak type bias and LE saturation that we are going to have it. In the limited circuit, we are going to provide a leak type bias and the LE saturation that we are going to have it. So this is the typical circuit diagram that we are going to have it for the limited circuit that we are going to have it. So this is the input signal that we are going to have it. If it is constant, there is no problem. If there is any variation in the input signal, if it flushes, then the current flows to this RGCC combination that we are going to have it, which we are calling as the leak type bias that we are going to provide. So if the input signal increases compared to the required level, then more current will flow to this. Therefore, the voltage developed across this resistance increases. So what does it mean? If the voltage increases, then the negative bias to your gate increases. So once the negative bias increases, the gain decreases. Once the gain decreases, output reduces when the input increases compared to our required level that we are going to have it. So what are the input variations? Higher than the required level will be eliminated by this grid leak bias by providing a negative bias to our gate and that reduces our gain and further we give you the constant output that we are going to have it. And here we are going to provide, here this capacity is a compensating uh, capacitor that we are going to have it. So neutralizing capacitor that we are going to provide with for your pet circuit that we are going to have it. So this is again the neutralizing capacitor that we are going to have it between the input and the output circuit that we are going to have it. And here, the VD is 
given to the rail by the dropping resistor RD that we are going to have it. So once you have this RD increases, the voltage that you are going to apply is going to be reduced and hence it gives you early saturation that we are going to have it. Instead of 5 volts, if you say that 4 volts is the applied voltage, then saturation will be much earlier. So that's what we said that by providing this resistor, we are going to have what we call early saturation. Therefore, if there is an input reduction, then what will happen? This will give you early saturation so that it gives you the maximum output per lesser input only. Because already the signal has been saturated or your cartridge has come to the saturation. Therefore, the output will be increased or to the saturation level that we are going to have. What do you mean by saturation? It has gone to the key maximum value. When the input is more, we said that we are going to reduce the gain and then so on we are maintaining the constant output. Whereas, if the input is reduced, then saturation comes because the flywheel effect of the output circuit, we are going to get back the same oscillator output that we are going to have. So that's what we are going to have it. And here, when we are having the saturation, then this gate and drain may be short circuited. To avoid that, we are going to provide a small resistor R to avoid this that is the short circuit between the gate and the drain when the circuit has gone to the saturation that we are going to have it. So this is the typical uh, limited circuit that we are going to provide so that if the input increases, it reduces and if the input reduces compared to the required level, then again we are going to saturation and because the flywheel effect of the circuit that we are going to have it, we will be getting back the original signal that we are going to have with the frequency variation being the constant. The typical characteristics that we can uh, see is, so this is the transfer characteristics that we are going to have it. So when the input is of a lesser level, the output comes to the same. When the input is very, very small, come by the required level, the output will be small. But once if the input comes to this stage 2 that we are going to have, when the input is from 1 to 2, then there will not be any constant output because the input is of a very small value. But once it comes to the threshold level of the required amplification or amplified amplitude that we are going to have it, then the output comes to the maximum value that we are going to have it. Right? That's what we are going to have it as the input comes to 2 to 3, two in between 2 and 3, the output is going to maintain the same value that we are going to have it. <coughs> if the input increases further, between 2 to 3 and 3 to 4, because of this saturation that we are going to have it, the operation of your amplifier comes to, this is a class A, a full cycle that we are going to have it, and a class B and class C operation that we are going to have it, as the input level increases further and further that we are going to have it. Between 3 to 4, it is coming to the class B operation, and 4 to 5, it is coming to the cross C operation that we are going to have. So after 4, the output again decreases. So if your input level variations are between 2 to 4, what are the variations that we are going to have because of noise that can be eliminated by our limiter circuit. If the input is less than this point 2 or more than this point 4, you can't do anything with this limiter circuit that we are going to have. Because so much noise has been there so that you are going to have. Instead of 5 volts, if you say that only 1 volt, then you cannot get the 5 volt signal back. Whereas, instead of 5 volts, if you say that 10 volts, then saturation comes and then what are the real effect that you are going to have, it may not be giving you the complete cycle of operation that we are going to have. Whereas, between 2 to 4, you are going to get the required constant output, even though the input is changing from 0.4 to 4 volts that we are going to have. So more than 4 volts or less than 0.4 volts, you cannot get the required limiter operation that we are going to have. So with this variation from 0.4 to 4 volts, we are getting the required limiter operation that we are going to have. If you think that the input variations will be much higher or lower, then you will be having two limiters that we are going to have, a double limiter, so that 
when they are given very small value, the output by for the first limiter, the output might have cost one volt or so. So if you give this to the second limiter, then the variations may be eliminated that we are going to have to what you call the double limiter secure that we are going to have. As typical stage that we are going to have it as two stage uh, amplification stage like that, you'll be having a double limiter so that much more variations compared to this 0.4 to 4 volts also can be eliminated in the nice, very, very noisy circuits or environment we expect, then you will provide a double limiter circuit also in those type of receivers that we are going to have. But normal receivers will be providing this single limiter that we are going to have. So that's what uh, the limiter circuit that is going to be there to provide the amplitude variation from 2 to 4 your output is going to be there. Even though the input is increasing from 0.4 to 4 volts, output is the same, right? So that's what the limited operation that we are going to have, okay? So that will be the FM uh, receiver secured that we are going to have it. And the next stage is your uh, amplification, the voltage amplification and the power amplification that we are going to have it. So that uh, we will be getting uh, the required operation and we have seen uh, the discriminator secured that we are going to have it. The next stage after the limiter is your discriminator, right? In your FM receiver, after the limiter, we have the discriminator. So you will be having a phase discriminator or a ratio detector which reduces to certain extent the amplitude variations that we are going to have. So depending on the requirement, we will be using a simple post oscillator discriminator or a ratio detector that we are going to have it in your Phase discriminator circuit that we have it. So that is about your uh, FM receiver and that of your AM receiver that we have. So other receiver typically we'll be talking about, which is going to be more sophisticated, is going to be our communication receiver that we are going to have. Which we said that uh, in the case of home receiver, we said that uh, the sensitivity may be 12 watt, 14 microvolt that we are going to have. Whereas a communication receiver, we said that it may be having only one microvolt is enough to give you the required standard output that we are going to have. What is this communication uh, receiver that we are going to have it? Always give us a radio receiver is for communication only. Right? What for we are using a receiver to receive the signal from a transmitter. So from transmission to reception, we are having the communication. But what is this? Communication receiver, a specific name that has been given that we are going to have. So this communication receiver is not for entertainment that we are going to have. This is for communicating the data or the information that we are going to have from a particular source to the particular destination that we are going to have it. Not a typical uh, broadcasting type of receiver that we are going to have it. Or if you have uh, in the olden days, if you might have had your know, home, is medium band uh, receiver along with short wave band signal receiver that we are going to have. In advanced or the partially receivers, you will be having a medium wave channel and then short wave is divided into number of bands that we have, sorry, short wave 1, short wave 2, short wave 3, a 3 band receiver or a 7 band receiver will be having short wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 that we are going to have it so that each stage you can fine tune to get the required station clearly that we are going to have it, okay? So a two band receiver may be having a beta wave and a short wave, but a four band receiver will be having three short wave bands and a seven band receiver will be having six short wave bands that we are going to have it, along with your medium wave band frequency signal that we are going to have. So a communication receiver will be having a different purpose of reception of the information that we are going to have it. But typically we can say that the communication is used basically not for entertainment that has been designed. But it can use, we use it to the, see the same broadcasting uh, station also, right? But this can be used for measurement of the weak signals that we are going to have it. And impedance measurements that we are going to have it and so on will be going for this communication receiver that we are going to have. At this communication receiver, the basic block diagram is once again a superheterodyne 
we say well, that we are going to have it so as you are saying that and because we said that it is it requires a better uh, coupling and amplification that we are going to have it so we will be having uh, a proper coupling unit between the antenna and the one input amplifier circuit that we are going to have it and because it should have very very high sensitivity we will be having definitely an rf amplifier in our am communication receiver that we are going to have right so we are having a coupling unit for your matching of the impedances that we are going to have so that the signal will not be lost in your uh, matching itself and then we will be having an rf amplifier for 2 to 16 megahertz signal that we are going to have for this short wave frequencies then we are saying that we are having what you call the first mixer we will see that uh, in a little while what is the first mixer and the second mixer that we are going to have so this is the sobering principle that we are going to have it and the input signals are ganged here with your local off letter and the RF amplifier to select your required frequency of operation at the channel that or the station that we are going to have it between this 2 to 16 megahertz what are the station you want it you can tune it accordingly local off letter frequency will be changing from 3.7 to the 17.7 megahertz that we are going to have it with the intermediate frequency of 1.7 7 megahertz that we are going to have it. So this is the a two stage IF amplifier that we are going to provide in your communication receiver, and then we are having a second mixer. What is the input for your second mixer? 1.7 megahertz. And what is the input for your first mixer? 2 to 16 megahertz. This is a variable frequency, whereas this is a fixed frequency. Therefore, here the local off frequency is a variable one, whereas this is a stable frequency, therefore we are using a crystal oscillator. So that exact frequency variations are the intermediate frequency you can get of 200 kilohertz as the next stage of the IF that we are going to have it. And then you are having the further uh, detection and other additional circuit that we are going to have. So basically your communication receiver will have the same basic principle of your superintendent AM receiver that we are going to have it with some extensions of the circuits that we are going to have, the principles that we are going to have it, the superhand principle. Now we have a double conversion. That's what I think I have used this name also, or the word double conversion in the previous classes. So we are having this double conversion to get that image frequency direction to be reduced by going for this uh, double conversion that we are going to have it. And similarly, the IF frequencies that we are going to have it. The, you, if you have a low IF frequency, you have some disadvantage. If you have higher IF frequency, you have some disadvantage. Whereas here, you have two IF frequencies, which eliminates both these disadvantages, and you are getting the overall performance to be increased, increased so that the IF, the AM receiver, or your communication receiver performs much better compared to your simple AM receiver that we are going to have. So we are having some uh, extensions of your sub-end principle. And some additional circuits that we are going to have. Here I provided a beat frequency oscillator. Then we have what you call a spell circuit and so on. So these are the additional circuits that we are going to have it. And some extensions that we are going to have it. We will see that what are the additional circuits that are the extensions that we are going to have it. And what are the additional circuits and how they perform to such an extent that we are going to have it. So that we will be having some advantage over the normal AM receiver that we are going to have it. Whereas the normal flow is like this only, a conversion and the conversion and the amplification and then so on that we are going to have it. So this is the basic superheterodyne principle that we are going to have. It, okay? So as I said that uh, we are having uh, the different extensions that we are going to have it. So the first one is the input stage that we are going to have it. So we said that in the block diagram we have a coupling unit so that impedance matching will be there so that no signal will be lost because we said that a communication receiver you can receive even one microvolt the signal is very very weak if there is a mismatch is there then this input signal one volt one microvolt at your uh, antenna by the time it comes to the mixer stage further reduced therefore it will match it to our nice signal that we are going to have it so to avoid that we are going to provide what you call this uh, input stages to give you the required uh, matching between the antenna and the
Mixer stays that we are going to have, or the RF amplifier that we are going to have. So as we said that, we will be having always the RF amplifier that we are going to have it in the case of a communication receiver. Whereas the home receiver, you may not have an RF stage or an RF amplifier that we are going to have. We will be saying that RF stage, which is a simple coupling circuit, but we may not be having the RF amplifier that we are going to have. So we have some uh, variations in the input stages that we are going to have it. And then, uh, what is this fine tuning that we are going to have it? So you have, you want to have that, uh, suppose, uh, 612.5 kilohertz is your transmitting station. So when you are tuning your knob, you might have gone to 612 or 613 when you are changing the frequency of operation that we are going to have because the capacitance you are going to change. And this is a single variation, ganglet variation that we are going to have it. So you may not be getting the exact tuning that we are going to have it. You know, it is close to tuning that we are going to have it. A cost to receivers will be having this fine tuning also. So that and the tremor capacitors will be there in our, along with your ganglion capacitor that we are going to have in the circuit excited mixers and uh, separate excited mixer we have seen that along with your ganglion capacitor parallel to that we are providing the tremor capacitors also CTR. So this fine tuning changes the CTR value, tremor values that we are going to have so that the exact tuning of the required station will be coming by this fine tuning circuit that we are going to have it. In the of course tuning, you will be having what you call fine tuning also in the case of a good communication receiver that we are going to have. Whereas the home receiver, a low cost home receiver will not have this fine tuning. Whereas a costly receiver may have a fine tuning also. Right? So that's what uh, the fine tuning that we are going to have it. Then what is this double conversion? So in the block stage that we are going to have it, we said that uh, uh, one mixer you are having 2 to 16 megahertz and then the oscillator frequency is 3.7 to 17.7 megahertz. So the output of this is going to be 1.7 megahertz, the first stage mixer that we are going to have it. Then this is given again to another mixer with the crystal oscillator that we are going to have very, very stable. Whether the local oscillator frequency may be varying. Therefore, we are going to have what you call the tracking problems. Because the input frequency and output, the oscillator frequency should be exactly by 7.7 megahertz. And because this is higher frequencies, maintaining that exact intermediate frequency is a difficult proportion of the tracking problems will be coming higher. Therefore, to avoid that, we are going for this double conversion so that we are going to have in the second stage the crystal oscillator so that your local oscillator is very, very stable. Therefore, there will not be any errors in the signal that we are going to have. And we said that. Uh, you cannot have a low IF or very high IF that we are going to have when you are choosing the intermediate frequencies uh, ranges that we are going to have it. We said that there is a disadvantage when you come, come have a very high IF and you have a disadvantage when you have a low IF also. So we said that there should be a compromise. Now instead of having compromise, we have provided two IFs. One high IF at 1.7 MHz and an IF at 200 kHz. Whereas even the medium wave frequency band of 535 to 1645, we said that we require 455 kilohertz as the intermediate frequency. Whereas from 2 to 16 megahertz, megahertz signal, I am using only 200 kilohertz signal as, as the IF frequency that we are going to have because we are providing the two stage conversion or the double conversion that we are going to have it. So one IF which is going to be at 1.7 megahertz and another one at 200 kilohertz. Whereas if you use this 200 kilohertz in your AM receiver, then the sharp cut off and then addition channels will cut off and so on. Therefore, you will be missing the signal itself. Therefore, we don't want that. So, both the advantages of high frequency IF and the low frequency IF has been obtained by going for this double conversion. And one more thing is that when you are talking about image frequency rejection, we said that if you have low IF, the alpha value is very small because when IF is small, your FIS also is going to be nearer to your signal frequency that we are going to have it. FS plus 2 FI. So if this FI is very small, then FSI and FS will be very closer. Therefore, FSI by FS will be very small. Therefore, 
Dabar vėl jūs vis man, dėl ką laukia vėl jūs man radio email frequency reduction will be poor. Therefore, by having a higher enough at the first stage, we are avoiding this image frequency reduction that we are going. What are the image frequency that will be coming? It will be eliminated in the first stage. Then later on we are having a low frequency, wherein there is no image frequency at the stage, second stage that we are going to have thus by the time what are the image frequency that has been there is eliminated by the first stage of conversion that we are going to have. So image frequency rejection is going to be much better in the case of this double conversion receiver compared to your normal conversion AM receiver with a low IF that we are going to have. One thing is, when we are designing this, we said that double conversion. But suppose a uh, mutual person is there, so he has done first low IF, then high IF. What will happen? There will not be any advantage, but it will be much, it will be much more worse. Because human frequency has entered because of low IF and the first stage that we are going to have it. So once it enters the IF stage, later it is only fixed IF we are going to provide. Therefore, you can't eliminate this adjacent signal that we are going to have. Therefore, we should have first IF, the high IF, and next IF as the low intermediate frequency that we are going to have it, so that we will be having what to call the double conversion that we are going to have it. Right? The other extension that we are going to have it is a delayed AGC. We have seen that AGC, because as the input signal is going to be much higher, we want that to be saturated, right? So that there will not be very high outputs coming to your loudspeaker and then your ear will not be disturbed. Whereas, if the signal is weak, what will happen? Even if the signal is weak, some major signal has been developed. Because some DC voltage will be developed by your RPC3 capacitor in your diode detector circuit that we are going to have it. Therefore, instead of having no AGC here, by having a simple AGC, the alternation or the reduction starts at the low input level itself. The input itself is low, and because of AGC, the amplitude has been reduced. Anyway, when the input is very large, then you wanted this to be controlled. But because you when the input signal is very large, you want to control that AGC is going to control the low signals also, which you don't want. Right? Actually, the ideal AGC that we are going to have it is until the input signal raises up to this point, there should not be any reduction that we are going to have it. And after this threshold, we wanted a constant output that we are going to have. Because when the signal is very weak, we don't want any control or the reduction in the output level that we are going to have. It. But a simple AGC circuit, what we have seen previously, will not be providing that facility <coughs> that we are going to have. It. Therefore, this simple AGC will not going to be used in our communication system, whereas we are going to provide what to call a delay AGC. Until the input comes to certain threshold value, there will not be any AGC signal that we are going to have it. So that's what we are going to have it. A simple AGC in itself, the AGC signal starts. Whereas, in the delayed AGC, until the input signal raises to certain value, the AGC signal will not be developed. So we are providing the, providing the biasing to our transistor such that, until the input signal raises to this level, the AGC will not be developed in your circuit, control circuit that we are going to have. And after this, we are having, as if it is normal AGC that we are going to have, which has set the delayed AGC. Instead of AGC starting at this signal, we are starting the signal control from this point onwards. That's why we say that this is a delayed AGC circuit that we are going to have. So that the weak signals are not attenuated by your AGC signal that we are going to have. Well, ideally we want the AGC like this, but that we may not be able to achieve it in a typical way because as you know that ideal circuits cannot be, or ideal filters we cannot implement it. Similarly, ideal cutoffs cannot be obtained. Therefore, we are providing 
a delay as you see that we have got have it in the set group that we have got have it which is the extensions of your am the server that we have got have it the other one is variable sensitivity and selectivity that we have got have it so we said that uh, the sensitivity is the minimum weak signal that we have got have it then by using that number of stages that we have got have it you may change that amplification levels for varying sensitivity that we are going to have it. So if the signal level you are going to expect to be very small, then you use more amplification that we are going to have it. It's not that gain control, volume control that we are going to have it, but the sensitivity control we are going to have it, variable sensitivity, which is will be there so that you will be providing required gain in your circuit that we are going to have it, so that you can increase the sensitivity of operation that we are going to have it. Similarly, the selectivity that we are going to have it. So we want to have the bandwidth variations can be obtained by having the different tune circuits in parallel. Choose that particular tune circuit, parallel circuit, so that the selectivity may be of the bandwidth of 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz, and so on. So depending on how much bandwidth you want it, you choose the required parallel tune circuits that we are going to have it. So that your selectivity can be very depending on the requirement that we are going to have. If you think that the signal is going to be very, very narrow, then you can have very narrow selectivity circuit that we are going to have it. Why you want a narrow selectivity circuit? No doubt you are having a bandwidth of 1 kilohertz signal, but whereas I have provided a 10 kilohertz bandwidth amplifier. What is the disadvantage here? I have a signal of 1 kilohertz bandwidth only, whereas the amplifier that is going to be there is going to be passing 10 kilohertz bandwidth signal. What will happen? Have a band signal. Then opposite watching this. So this is the signal level that we are going to have it. Whereas your amplifier passes this much bandwidth. This is the signal. So what are the noise that we are going to have it here? All things will be passed by your amplifier. The noise, all these noise, all things will be passed. Therefore, your signal noise ratio is going to be more. More? It will be less because more noise you are going to add. Signal is going to be of the same. Whereas, if you have the amplifier to have only this much bandwidth, then all this noise will be eliminated. So, you wanted to have a narrow bandwidth amplifier that we are going to have when we are having a very narrow signal that we are going to have. We have a larger bandwidth. Suppose if you say that you have the amplifier of this bandwidth. But the signal is going to be like this. What will happen? This signal is cut off because the amplifier bandwidth is only this. That means you are reducing the bandwidth. That means you are cutting off the required signal so that your signal is so poor now, which you don't want. So depending on the expectations of the input signal that we are going to have, you have to increase or decrease your well selectivity that we are going to have it. That's what we are going to provide by what we call the variable 
and activity circuits that we are going to have. So these are the extensions, simple tune circuits that we are going to have it and then give you the circuit that we are going to have it. The other one is what you call blocking. So you want, even though we say that we require the blocking, but actually it's not that blocking, you have to avoid that blocking that we are going to have it. We said that uh, you have a weak signal, right? Therefore, what will be the AGC level that we are going to have it? When the weak signal is going to be there, the AGC signal will also will be small. Right? When we have a weak signal, the AG signal is small so that the gain has reduced instead of like this, you have to reduce here. Whereas the input signal is larger, instead of having this level, the input has come to this level only because more AGC has been provided. Because input signal is going to be more, the AGC is going to be more. But suppose you have a weak signal, the AGC that you are going to provide is small. There is no problem if you have only one signal that you are going to have it. But suppose you have adjacently, you have a strong station, right? What will happen? This strong station might have been picked up by a receiver and this strong station provides now AGC signal, which will be a much larger value compared to our weak signal station that signal AGC that we are going to have it. Therefore, this larger AGC reduces your big signal further, therefore your output may be further reduced. That means at the output you may not be getting the output at all. Right? Therefore we don't want that to happen. Now by having an adjacent station, a very strong signal, because when we set the selectivity, we said that after 20 kilohertz it should provide 60 That's what your stealth secure that we are going to have it or silence is acute in your normal uh, police receivers or walkie talkies that we are going to have and so on. Okay? Right. Next. Then this automatic frequency control that we are going to have. Because uh, you have that uh, 2 to 16 megahertz, your local oscillator we are going to provide available frequency generator that we are going to have. No doubt the second stage, we are providing crystal oscillator that 1.7 megahertz, 1.7? megahertz oscillator that we are going to have the crystal oscillator because the first stage IF is 1.7 megahertz. So when you mix it 1.5 megahertz, then you are going to get 200 kilohertz as output. And as you look into that, the input frequency to the mixer is 1.7 megahertz. The local frequency is 1.5 kilohertz lower. Whereas when we are talking about AM receiver, we said that local frequency is higher than the input frequency that we are going to have. Because there is no image frequency problems or tracking problems here, so we can choose approximately the required frequency depending on the design that we are going to have it. Okay? So that's what the advantage of going for this double conversion that we are going to have. Okay? So that's what uh, we are going to have. And the AFC, so you have to provide uh, how to provide the frequency control, automatic frequency control. You have a detector, change that frequency variation that gives you DC signal and that you give it to your VCO or your local oscillator. So that the capacity of the reactance will be changing and then changing its frequency of operation that we are going to handle. So this a continuous feedback will be provided in your uh, AFC circuit so that your automatic frequency control will be there. Like your typical example is that what you have done in the case of FM transmitter stabilization of the frequency that we are going to have it. We will not use exactly the same circuit but a feedback circuit with a frequency detection or the phase detection that we are going to provide and then that generates a DC signal and that will be giving you to the VF VCO so that that will be giving the required frequency of operation that we are the other external circuit that we are going to provide is the matron circuit that we are going to have it. So in the communication receiver, for servicing sometimes we require a matron. And wherever you have this communication receiver, you may not be able to carry all the required instruments that we are going to have it. Therefore, your communication receiver also provides some matron circuit also in that, in that uh, 
interest acute of the transistor that we are going to have it, we'll be having a meter so that depending on the flowing of the current, you can measure the different voltages of the currents in our various points of the communication receiver that we are going to have. So that where there is a problem, suppose the soldier is carrying his communication receiver, suddenly it is a failure, no signal is being received. So you go on taking at the different points using this testing circuit that we are going to have it and you know at each point what will be the level that is required in that meta indication that we are going to have. And you can find out where the problem is. So once you know the problem, you try to rectify it or inform the base station to provide the sufficient inputs that we are going to have so that there will not be any much communication gap that we are going to have. Okay? So a communication receiver provides this mating circuit also along with all these additional circuits that we are going to have. So as I said that uh, your communication receiver will be a much more sophisticated work because as I said that a soldier or a person uh, is going to for the security purpose and all those things will be having this communication receiver. But not for a general entertainment like uh, of your work, home or the broadcasting receiver that we are all soldiers will not have the same information or the same transmission that we have going to have. Each receiver will have different frequency of reception that we have going to have because only that person has to receive the signal. Not all the people. If you transmit like a broadcasting, what will happen? Initially, your fellow soldiers, the opposite persons also will receive the same signal because he also will be tuning what the other man is doing. Like when he is transmitting, you will try to find out. So when you are transmitting, he wants to find out what are the variations or what signals have been transmitted to different control points are the people that we are going to have. So always this is goes on, cat and uh, mouse that we are going to have it. Therefore, uh, which means we don't know. So naturally, always we want to win, right? That's the, that's the nature. India, Pakistan. So always we want India to win. So we are India. Any of Pakistan is one. Pakistan to win. It is natural, we can't find fault with uh, anybody, but as a national, you should uh, do for that. So, we have to go on doing that. For that, uh, as I said, uh, we will be having different sophistications that we are going to have it in your communication itself, which are all not there in your home receiver that we have. Okay? That's what uh, your uh, radio receiver that we are going to have it, or your communication. Basically, this communication receiver is not there in our uh, syllabus typically, okay? But you should know, it's not that uh, simple super and receiver, but what are the advantages and disadvantages of your communication receiver also? Anyhow, in uh, our touching syllabus, anyhow, once again, we are including this. But somehow, in your syllabus, it has been cut off. I think uh, accidentally it has, might have been done, but now it has been re-included in uh, R16 syllabus. That's why you should also know that, otherwise, your juniors will be learning and your seniors also have learned already about communication receiver. Whereas if they say that what is the communication receiver, what is the school circuit and so on, you will put a blank face, a white face, which I don't want. Okay? That's why who study this communication receiver also of a general interest that they have. May not be of uh, an examination point of view that they have. Okay? So that uh, uh, completes your uh, radio receivers and the transmitters that we have. So, next class will 